Bien, nous allons commencer, si le panel veut bien prendre place. Euh, et, euh, on va se serrer. Bien, merci à tous d'être venus. Um, samedi, 5h30, donc on va essayer de le faire uh, plus ou moins uh, animé et, uh, et intéressant. Uh, merci beaucoup d'être venus. Donc on, on va vous parler um, d'art digital, même s'il n'y a pas de termes vraiment précis, uh, des termes multiples que je ne vais, vais pas me lancer dans le débat. Um, C'est vous donner une idée un, de ce que je crois qui est un des pans uh, les plus intéressants de l'art contemporain aujourd'hui. Uh, euh, ici, autour de, autour de vous, vous avez dans différents panels, on présentera individuellement qui et qui un peu plus tard, au moment où ils prendront parole et où ils parleront. Mais ce n'est pas ça qui est le plus intéressant. Donc vous avez deux collectionneurs, <rire> deux artistes <rire> et une galeriste. Euh, donc on va essayer de vous donner un, un tour d'horizon de, de ce que nous connaissons de ce secteur euh, qui est encore un secteur encore très peu connu, malheureusement trop peu connu, et de ses évolutions et ses défis. Euh, je vais vous commencer par une brève introduction, de, de vous expliquer pourquoi un gars de 53 ans comme moi, qui collectionne de l'art contemporain, euh, s'est tout à coup intéressé à, à l'art digital. En fait, ce n'est pas tout à coup, c'est que ça a été pratiquement depuis le début euh, où, où je me suis intéressé. C'est que, et si je vous donne un, un bref contexte, euh, un peu d'histoire de l'art pour essayer de vous positionner. On est dans une foire d'art contemporain où il y a beaucoup de, 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 de peintures et de tableaux et de sculptures euh, à bord. Euh, pourquoi, comment se positionne euh, cet art dont on va parler aujourd'hui Il fait partie intégrante de cet art contemporain d'aujourd'hui. Alors, sur base de quoi est-ce que fait, je suis arrivé à cette conclusion euh, je viens, mon background c'est de la finance et dans la finance en fait on n'est on est rien d'autre que des absorbeurs d'informations qui essaient de les recracher en des analyses euh, de ce que le futur, le futur pourrait être puisque le but c'est euh, d'investir dans ce que sera, sera le futur donc ça a toujours mon habitude de le faire de cette manière là quand j'ai approché le monde de l'art je me suis dit tiens je, je remarque que dans l'histoire de l'art euh, il arrive très souvent que l'art qui est préservé, qui mérite d'être préservé et c'est l'art que que j'essaye de, de, de collectionner. Pour moi, collectionner, ce n'est pas du tout une accumulation d'objets de luxe. Euh, C'est vraiment l'idée d'accumuler de, des idées euh, ou des représentations du monde actuel. Euh, donc, C'est dans ce, dans cette, dans cette, dans ce concept-là. Et dans ce concept-là, je remarque que dans l'histoire de l'art, il y a un certain nombre de constantes. Ce qui était assez curieux, c'est que je n'ai aucun background d'histoire de l'art. Donc, j'ai dû un peu creuser dans les, dans les livres pour comprendre ces évolutions. Mais j'ai appris à ma grande surprise que, par exemple, et j'ai tout à fait compris pourquoi, par exemple, euh, les impressionnistes euh, sont en fait directement liés à la révolution industrielle qui est arrivée dans la deuxième moitié du, euh, du 19e siècle. Alors vous me direz... Oui. Oh, oh, that's true. Uh, sorry. I don't know why I started speaking French. Thank you very much, Jack. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I'm just. Um, I just speak both languages. On, on the internet, I speak English. Okay, so fine. Um, uh, I will not start again. Um, so, if you look at the impressionists, you need really to understand. I'll give you a full example uh, about this. Um, it's um, uh, why is it linked to the industrial revolution? Is that before the industrial revolution, the only way to be wealthy and powerful? was either to own a lot of lands, to be part of nobility, or to be part of the church, um, which are the two ways. So uh, the art at the time was ours, the Christ coming off the cross, or um, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the prince of whatever on his horse uh, uh, in some way. So, um, and there was an academy who was controlling the world, was extremely controlled. Um, And suddenly, the revolution, the revolution really injected complete changes in the, in, the, in the whole society. But it also brought some new technologies, like, for example, the paint, which was in tube, um, which makes it possible to paint on the outsides. So I will not extend that, uh, that comparison, which is, of course, very simplistic. Um, but it, it's important to understand. I understood that 
yes, to understand impressionists, you need to understand the context, the economic, or so, the economic uh, and social context of the time. In the same way, uh, I was looking at, um, at surrealism, um, and it was interesting that to see that surrealism spread out around Europe at the same time that the translation of the theory of dreams of Freud was uh, going around. Because this book was very revolutionary for the time, um, and it was translated progressively, and at the same time that this translation was going around Europe, the surrealism was going around. So it was important to understand that surrealism didn't come uh, by uh, self-generation, but uh, went from link to this. The same with the Dada movement. The Dada movement was a direct reaction in 1917 in Zurich um, to the horror and the, the chaos and the stupidity and the madness of, um, of the First World War. Um, and we can go on and go on across history uh, with the, the pop art, which came after the, uh, the, the consumption society, after the Second World War, because, of course, the industry was able to produce a lot of tanks and bombs, so that rather than producing tanks and bombs, they decided to produce washing machines and television. Um, and it's, it was um, uh, the, the, the start of that um, consumption society and the pop arts um, and many other movements. Of course, again, I agree it's very simplistic, and my... Um, friend who is art historian here will say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But that's okay. You're in. Um, then I said to myself, okay, now let's look at um, the year 2000, 1990, 2000, 2015. Now let's try to, s to imagine what the world or the history will remember of 2000 in 2150. We will be all be dead or some brain in some new cyborg, or I don't know exactly what we will be. But um, it will be then the question of um, what will we remember of the year 1990, 2000, 2010. Then it appeared to me when I started looking at uh, digital art that obviously the, um, the revolution of computers, personal computers, uh, internet, um, internet 1.0, internet 2.0 was definitely something that changed the world dramatically, the world and society. So I said to myself, okay, um, is, are there artists that are already using this medium? And then I realized that it was amazing. It's like across the whole history, the artists that started, who started already to, um, to work with those new medium, immediately they were produced. The same as Polaroids, as a, a Super 8 uh, camera. It was always the case. I think we have a spectator who is uh, very happy um, with, with this introduction. But um, it's, it's about, um, I, really I realized that there was a whole ecosystem that already existed of artists that were creating art. So first of all, we arrive already at a very important point. It needs to be art still. So it's, I'm referring to my, my previous panel. Um, what is art eventually? Art must be something which is questioning the world, questioning the, the, the certainties we have. Um, opening up new solutions, new ideas, drawing our, our attention to certain type of problems. Um, uh, like every movement of the world have been doing, whether Warhol, whether the Impressionist, whether the Dada uh, movement, they always did it. So it's important that um, the, um, uh, he's waving to his wife because we live on Facebook, so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Um, So um, it was, I was very amazed to discover. And being in the art world, the contemporary art world, I said that those guys have no visibility in the, in the art world. Nobody cares about, about, uh, about this. But they are uh, very lively and very intelligent works of art. So I decided to say, OK, let's put a dip into it uh, and start. And when I, I bought my first work of art, it was a computer. You know, I brought home a computer. When, when you can imagine the difference that there is between easily buying a, um, uh, a painting in, in this art fair and deciding to buy a work of art which is represented by a piece of software on the computer. So um, uh, this is why I developed, and I, this is why I, I think we definitely it is extremely important to, um, 
to consider this uh, medium, and of course there are many discussions whether it should be separated. But for me, this is the contemporary art of today. And this is um, the one that we need to preserve and we will be discussing those elements. So after this introduction, I'd like now to pass the word to uh, two artists. We have um, uh, uh, on the panel, Felix and, and, and a collective um, called Jody. Um, I think I start with, with Jody, why? Because they are one of the guys I, was dis I discovered when we started very early on. I think their practice started in the mid 1990s, if I'm right. You have, you have a uh, my, my practice, yeah, but <laughs> they can hear me, but it's better I talk like this because then they hear me here, but not on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> well, <it's> okay. <laughs> what is most important, that you are here or that some people are listening? No, no, he, cho he, choose, he choose not to uh, speak in the microphone. No, it's okay. It's um, no, uh, my career started in uh, Saint-Luc, ici, dans, dans les années 80. Ma Bruxelles. Moi, je vais parler français maintenant okay. parce que sur l'Internet, on parle français. Donc, euh, euh, moi, je suis né à Etterbeek, donc euh, j'ai fait Saint-Luc ici. Et euh, après quelques années, j'ai fait de l'art vidéo et des performances et, euh, avec euh, mon ami Kuntes. C'était les années de, de, de l'art vidéo, de, le, début de, de le début de Argos. Euh, et il euh, y avait Chris Dercon qui, euh, qui fait, faisait la, la promotion, la promotion de, de, de the second wave of um, Belgian video art. And so um, we decided, yeah, with his help and so on, we, um, we could go to the Art Academy in Düsseldorf. There was Nam June Pike, so I wanted to... You speak yeah, it was English a TP. Oh, I forgot about it. Yeah, but my <laughs> my Brussels is not my Brussels is not so good anymore. My Brussels one. So, you know, so I, I started long time ago. I mean, uh, it's not. Uh, I think what's interesting is, I mean, I, I'm seeing it from outside. From what you, what you, what we very well known. Your practice was always to to look at the internet in a very Belgian way. I'm sorry to say, and I'm I'm mm. saying. A very yes. surrealist this way, uh, which is observing the reality mm. and the the fact the way a computer is working. Yeah. But a computer has got some bugs. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, the only decision that we we made uh, <coughs> was not to bring our content that we would know or things we would want to tell about things or subjective whatever stories, um, but that we would bring what we found inside the computer or inside the systems, inside the network, and that we, we would use that as subject matter, uh, even if we did not fully understand or understand what it was about. Uh, but it was a structure which was uh, more and more being imposed on us, and uh, we reacted to it. Um, so. Um, it's very Do rare I that you see uh, a, a, a mass medium, a new medium uh, be born and be there really um, at, 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 at its birth. I mean, we were really at, uh, in 1993, um, uh, 94, we were in um, art school in, in the Netherlands, uh, post-academy in Van Eyck Academy. And uh, um, there, actually, we, we together I met my, my wife, my later wife, Joan, because I'm only half Jody, yeah? so as I'm Dirk, which is, and uh, Joan is, um, yeah, the first part of Jody. <laughs> and, um, which, uh, I mean, she's not here, she had to go to a hacking uh, workshop in Berlin, you know, it's, it's more fun. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, we, 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 after that art school, we wanted to continue with computers, but there was no, I mean, uh, no education for that. Um, so we, we, we managed to go to San Francisco to, um, uh, we ended up at San Jose State University in 94, where then uh, the internet was introduced slowly to, to, to universities. And uh, then we, 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 we Immediately, I mean, I understood it was the next, let's say, I mean, after my interest in broadcast television and mass media, which was uh, hopeless, I mean, to have access to or to fight against, like uh, Namjoon Pike would do, um, we saw the new mass medium uh, happening and we decided to, to work with it immediately. So, uh, 
we came into the desert of the internet. I, I'd like, because the, the, what I know by experience from the people, when I speak, up, speak about digital art, they don't understand what they're talking about because they're confusing with video who are loops or, or different element of visual. So, uh, Jody, would you have any visual that we could uh, see on the computer? Uh, if, yeah. if, <laughs> if it's not too hard. We can watch Facebook, eh? <laughs> Yeah, no, but seriously, but if you want to. Why? Yes, yeah, seriously, no, no, just, just for the people uh, to understand. Yeah, no, yeah, this, this, I mean, yeah, I mean, digital art, I think, is totally the wrong term for our work. I mean, we have in a way nothing to do with digital art. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, I but decide. whatever we call it, I mean, I know that people kill you know, themselves for knowing whether uh, no, angels no, 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 are no, no, sex I mean or not. What I stand for, I mean, what I really want to defend in art is the self-publishing. Yeah, it's, it's the medium. It's it's not the material. I, I, I defend the internet. I don't defend um, digital. You know, digital is wh whatever. I, I'm not. But I'm <coughs> I'm quite idealistic about <coughs> what 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 happened uh, since the 90s online and what, what artists and, uh, contributed to, um, to this new uh, medium. So, so what's, what's al already interesting? <laughs> okay, what's okay. already interesting is so they practiced studying in 1993, which is, I mean, uh, it's well, 24 years ago. Um, and I'm well, sure I mean that net art, net art exists since 94, 95 officially. I mean, that it started with five people and it grew, it grew, it grew. I mean, it, it's exponential. I mean, uh, artists today, like uh, I mean, more famous names, are, are, have also used and comment on, on the early days and later it developed into Web 2.0 where uh, people started to work with the services, with the social environment, anti-Facebook, anti-YouTube. Uh, you know, all kinds of restrictions or, or commercializations or, or the way it, it follows our, our, um, our life. Um, this was, I mean, I'm part of the first, uh, the net art, the web one uh, generation, if you want. I mean, that's when well, we started. I mean, it, I'm not going to, to do a whole... Just one, uh, just one or two. This was our website. I mean, I uh, just... Uh, <laughs> maybe you didn't notice. Um... I mean, uh, this was made in uh, 94, 95. It's, it's very... Uh, so it sta it's whatever, starting you know, from... I mean, it, you have to think about... I mean, yeah, it's a long story. I mean, it, it has to do about media. It has nothing to do with digital art. Really nothing. I mean, um, like video has to do with television or with the exploration of space and time. I mean, I, I decided, I mean, to, to see, uh, to work in the direction of television, of mass media at the time. I mean, I made, a, yeah, sample TV, VJ, you know, that, that type of stuff like, like Mam Jun Pai could do. And also, they, that generation, that side of the video artist, they choose to work on local cable TV and so on. I mean, they tried to, to intervene in, in the mass medium at, at the time. Uh, and um, yeah, that, that is what the internet later uh, made possible also, or makes possible uh, for us. I mean, it's, it's uh, and uh, that's, I mean, it's a much bigger invention than, 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 than television. Uh, I mean, we, yeah, so. So, uh, the, so the base was to, to, to use um, uh, bugs very often from f or creating well, creating bugs. For example, can yeah. you explain what, what this website is? Yeah. You were creating these websites? Yeah, well, yeah, this, well, no, bugs, yeah, no. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I mean, when painting hangs on a, on a canvas, is it a bug when it's just hanging there? I mean, it's, it's paint is not supposed to, 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 to hang on. Paint is supposed to hang on the wall like this, you know, white paint, you know, like that's, so every painting is a bug because they, they do it, they, they, you know, I mean, it's not made correctly as we would expect it functionally. Of course, all art is dysfunction, uh, dysfunctional. I mean, we, we are here to fuck things up, you know. These are the words of Mike Kelly, literally. I mean, that, that, that's it, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But there is a the material side of the digital, of the digital, and that's the code. I mean, the code, uh, um, the, the the language where also video games are made with, and so on, and and software is made with, and then the, 
Yeah, and, and, and online, the servers, uh, um, the, the, the page, the HTML, the, the, the World Wide Web, that was the first invention. That, that's actually, um, that's like uh, uh, making the internet medium accessible by a browser. That, that was the, the World Wide Web. And uh, that's what we, we explored, and that's what this work, yeah, Explores. I mean, I, I have to then do, yeah, go back a little bit. <laughs> it's it's a bit annoying. Uh, yeah, can you imagine this this page? This is actually this is the prototype of a bug. It's actually totally wrong. This page. I mean, we got a lot of trouble with this page. Can you imagine? In 95, 96, um, this this page. I mean, now I have to go to the fenet. Uh, I have to have to try to open the source of this, which became more and more difficult, actually, opening browsers. Um, it's also strategic, of course. In the beginning, the, when, when you had a browser, the, the button to go to the source was immediately there, because they wanted us all to make home pages, to, make, uh, to intervene, in, to, to, to have collaborate on this ideal this, uh, of, of the World Wide Web to build our, our little uh, yeah, or a page in there. So they made it, the, the browser itself is open source by definition, so because the code is always there. Uh, it, and it was easy to make. Now I almost can not find it, so especially in French, I have to go to, maybe you can help me, where is it? Oh no. <laughs> um, so so, if, so if anyway, I but it's quite, yeah, you should, yeah, you are, Specialist. I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether <laughs> the public understands exactly what it is. So th no, this page, uh, this page is taken. Is taken. Is, is a is a is kind of a. We could call it a screen print uh, of 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 the of the actual page. Mm -hmm. The problem that is posed by the medium is, of course, they are referring to pages that exist on the web, uh, um, and that's and and the no fact the way the web had been restructured no, with the. Yeah. No. Well, I don't know. It's not so important, okay, but this is the code of that page. I mean, in the code, you see a bomb, basically. It's a drawing, it's a so-called ASCII drawing, and it's, it's a diagram how to build an atomic bomb. I mean, it was, so we were, <laughs> yeah, you could do that. You could do that. With the help of Imal, with the help of Imal, we can build an atomic bomb. <laughs> um, no, but so we were actually, displaying these drawings, I mean, just wanting to display it like this, like, but on, on in, in a color. And then something went uh, wrong, because when you don't do uh, pre-format, suddenly this appeared. I mean, if you look carefully, you can still see that all the characters, all the little uh, lines and so on, they are also in this ASCII. I mean, it is, this drawing is the, the same <laughs> as this one. I mean, it, it's actually quite simple. It, it, it's like in um, design, it's, they call it pre-formatting. It is when the, 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 the lines at the end of a page are not, um, not don't go to the next line to, to continue, um, to, to, yeah, to continue in an order so that this drawing is being displayed. You see, this, this drawing, it needs to break after line when there is number eight. No, no, no. When all this doesn't happen, then you get this mess and it just goes all over the place in the screen. And on top of it, it it's elastic. I mean, it, it goes, I mean, as wide. So it's total non-design. It's, it's an accident. Uh, well, yeah, this <laughs> people saw this and they said, well, what is this? You know, you... Uh, what are you doing? I mean, uh, and on top of it, the thing you want to do is in the background. I mean, the, why are you doing this? And they were really upset, and, and we uh, also like uh, the indexes, uh, Yahoo at the time, they did not want to display it because they say this, this doesn't look good, the basics of coding, this is bad for you, if, if uh, this will, well, uh, and so this relation between the, 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 the background, the code, you know, which can be funny, it's basic, it's really fun, it's not difficult. I mean, it's just five uh, commands, everyone can do it, you know, and you can even make mistakes in it and it still looks good. 
So that's what we continue to explore because, I mean, yeah. yeah. We, we, we covered we many, many points. All I wanted at this point is give an ID so that yeah. you understand much better what yeah. we're talking about. Now I'd like maybe Felix to, um, to show a very different form. <laughs> Um, I will not call it. So it's you a nuclear call it, bomb. You call it X Y Z uh, art um, because, of course, it doesn't have. No, nobody wants to be locked in a in a little cage. So th that's a, there's a big debate within the area about how you call it. So you call it whatever you want. Um, um, Felix is um, uh, Spanish of origin, but we don't really care because we are all uh, human beings. So. Um, has been working uh, in XYZ art for um, over 10 years? Uh, yeah, around 10 years, yeah. So... Yeah. And he, he's, he's a, I really like um, his approach because he was questioning his, his uh, subject matter in some way is infinity. Um, and he, I read a, few, a very good interview that uh, we can give a link to later. Uh, but it was always about uh, trying to find out. It's a very philosophical uh, approach, uh, and mixing philosophy and science, uh, but yes. you will explain better than me. Yes, th that in fact is one of uh, the, the installations or projects that I did. Uh, well, maybe to start, like uh, Jody, from the beginning, I, I study anthropology, in fact, so, uh, first. And then I was very much into sound and music, electronic music, and I went to Barcelona to study new media art. Um, and at that time, in 1999-2000, uh, I started going to uh, uh, digital art exhibitions and... Uh, XYZ art, please. And, uh, and, uh, and I discovered Jody work, I have to say. And uh, at that time, I was uh, already into science fiction. And, well, first, the first time I saw his work, I, I thought this is really cyberpunk. I mean, this is the definition of cyberpunk. And at that time in Barcelona, there was a very interesting net art scene, 50-50, uh, and uh, all these people making really crazy and really amazing uh, artworks. And um, I've never done really net art, so I don't, I don't really have the same, uh, you will see, uh, tools, practice, uh, subjects as Jody. But I have to say that it, it really influenced me at that time. And, uh, and then um, I studied new media art and I was more and more interested in making things, making objects, making music, electronic music instruments, making, making things. And uh, so uh, in um, 2008, I uh, start my first my first uh, personal project, which is uh, which is Chapter One: The Discovery. So basically, it's a project. I have, uh, maybe I'm gonna read a little bit just to be very fast because if not, um, so my main subject is uh, science fiction. Um, and so Chapter One: The Discovery is a project about the re representation of alterity or otherness. That's uh, I come from anthropology, so. Uh, in science fiction narratives. Chapter one, the discovery, focus on the moment of the discovery of the other. The installation takes part in two spaces. So uh, maybe we look to check. So in the first space, uh, what you see is a video projection of, uh, uh, of this uh, object in different uh, scenarios. And in fact, what I represent is like an infinitive loop of uh, the moment uh, just before uh, the character encounters uh, this object. So I reproduce that in a virtual context, in a, in a video uh, format. And then in the second uh, space of the installation, uh, well, you, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the public uh, encounters the object, uh, the entity, the otherness, and in fact, it's materialized, so it's, it's, uh, it's real, it's physical, and it reacts to your presence, generating uh, sequ sequences of, uh, of light and sound. Uh, Nilex Nilo, Nilex Nilo is maybe the only, well, I would not say net art project, but uh, I use the internet in this project. And basically what I did is this uh, alphanumeric display, is in the sculpture, um, and basically what happens is that um, in, ne in Nilex Nilo, um, I uh, project a fictional near future, um, 
sorry. Um, I project into a fictional near future a uh, present technology, spam emails, uh, message that are cybercrime activity generated by, by botnets um, of a network of hacked computers. So uh, basically, Nilex Nilo, a computer, um, receives spam messages in real time and it generates uh, replies. And so what you see in the installation is, uh, is just the data flow between the internet and the computer. And for each spam message, which is a show, um, uh, the computer generates a response, a res response and it's sent uh, back to the sender of the, of the spam. So in, in fact, it's just an absurd uh, dialogue that goes into infinity between the, the computer and the network. And uh, the background of the project is, of course, science fiction, but also uh, artificial intelligence. I, the hypothesis of the work is what will happen if uh, a computer by chance will uh, acquire uh, artificial intelligence. And my hypothesis is that it will become mad in the process and starts just, uh, uh, it will become completely confused and mad. So that's basically the, the, what the installation shows. Different Ways to Infinity, which uh, Alan was talking about, is a project about uh, the perception of science. And uh, I experiment where uh, science touches uh, metaphysics in a way. It's very subjective as a project. And basically, there are several works. Uh, this one is about gravity. So it's just uh, inverted pendulums that... Uh, that uh, so th th there is a linear movement. The pendulum gets inertia when it goes to the vertical point. There is an uh, artificial intelligent uh, algorithm that tries to maintain the pendulum in equilibrium. So it's kind of a robotic dancer. Uh, it's like when you get a, a piece of wood and you try to maintain it uh, in equilibrium. It's the same thing, but but um, uh, it's, it's, it's it's a machine. So this, this piece is about gravity. Uh, there are other works in the installation which are uh, around uh, chaos theory. Uh, for example, this is a synthesizer that genera generates real chaos. Um, so uh, yeah, I will not start talking about it, but basically what you see here is real chaos generated by, uh, by uh, an electronic circuit. Thank you, thank you, Felix. What, what we'll do, because that's yeah. exactly what I wanted you, uh, because rather than speaking in theory about X, Y, Z art, um, we, you see more what we're talking about. Yes. And we will start a debate as many different things, and we have only an hour, a uh, good hour before answering your question. Yeah. What I noticed when I got my, my finger in that, um, that market at the time, uh, uh, let's call it whatever market, art world, or, or whatever you want to call it, is that there was zero infrastructure. That means that the artists were alone. Uh, there was no galleries uh, who were uh, interested in showing and probably no museums and no collectors uh, for them. So what I really noticed is that the artists were doing the whole job of representing themselves. Uh, of course, via a website, but um, they were doing the PDF the first time I was approaching them uh, because there was no infrastructure from the, uh, from the existing way of distributing art. Um, so it evolved a little bit. It was, very, of course, very problematic to try to um, eventually develop this art, um, make it public, and, of course, try to make a living out of it uh, if it was possible. Um, so... The, the situation has evolved a little bit because you are here now. We are speaking uh, within an art, a contemporary art fair. So it means that um, there seems to be a little bit more interest um, in this, despite the numerous problems we're going to come uh, to it. Um, but there are some galleries that are getting interested in the subject. And this is why I brought on board Valentina, um, who is... Uh, who's um, uh, an art historian, uh, so she's, uh, she's used to, uh, to work with um, amazing works of art like uh, by Calder. This is how we met uh, by Calder, by the way. Um, and he, uh, she's working with Space, um, uh, the, ma the major uh, gallery, American gallery. Um, and they developed uh, a few years ago uh, a special section dedicated to XYZ arts in different form, another definition, because of course there's a multiple, uh, as you've seen, there's net art, we spoke with, with um, Jody about net art, we saw about um, other type of objects, more technological objects, so there are diff very different ways 
uh, but they develop uh, interest um, on that field as well, and I would like her, because she needs to take the train and leave at 6.30, so she'll be uh, taking the word now and try to speak to us about uh, what it is to be um, a gallerist in this section, what are the challenges, and uh, what, how you see uh, the evolution of it. Yes. Hi. Um, so just as a small, small introduction, um, PACE has been, uh, exists since the early 60s and uh, it has always tried to, to live with the context and leave the artistic scene with its context. I mean, uh, there was no, um, we're not trying to make a difference and there was no question about the medium itself. It was really about the art, uh, its idea, its uh, focus. Um, it could have been a sculpture, a painting, an installation, a performance, or today technology. Um, this, was, this is how the family, the founders of the gallery, has always strived to work with, uh, work with, the, with the artists. So uh, as, for example, Terrell, in the 60s, or Bob Irwin, uh, we're not talking about something concrete, but a light work, working with light, working with uh, constructions. Um, so it's radically different from what we're talking now, but it's still just uh, a start to open the conversation about, we're talking here not about a medium in itself, but an artwork, an art or how, is, how you call it, an art object, an idea. So, uh, and I think this is a very important uh, thing to a, have in- Still a lot of education to make for your, for your, um, your clients on, on that field, certainly. There, there is still, there is still. So that's why we have this. So we work, for example, with an artist for almost 15 years, whose name is Michal Robner, and she is a digital artist. She makes videos. She makes she makes photos. But she also she works digitally, and she has been at the gallery for almost 15 years. So we are working on that process for years. But that's true. That today uh, we had to develop a program that we call Pace Art and Technology to reach a larger audience because uh, it's, it's very recent, it's been for, for one year, and it's been so successful, so it successful. It started on the West Coast, I think. It started on the West Coast uh, in Palo Alto, and this is where, this is where all the idea, the, the idea came uh, to, to birth, because uh, this is also where many IT people are, uh, are based. So, um, for example, for an artist like Michal Rovner, uh, we are not <coughs> talking, when we see her work of art, we do not see a video, we see, we could, we see um, an idea, something that could be appealing to any public. I mean, so many people are absolutely ignorant about video art, digital art, and it doesn't matter, because when you see the work, you are attracted like let me say, an like, an a like, like a magnet because the subject is so universal it's so open it's so um she's an israeli artist but she works with the palestinian uh, uh, artists uh, and israeli artists and uh, uh, american people so she is so universal that she appeals to a large public and so it's not, um, we are never considering the question about digital art or video art. It's the art in itself and what she's trying to tell through this art. Do you want to speak to us about that new art and technology um, department? And Absolutely, what? yes. So uh, the PACE Art and Technology program started last year. Uh, we actually, <laughs> Uh, invited the collaborative Team Lab, a Japanese collaborative of, they are about 300 people in this collaborative. 
They gather designers, scientists, engineers, architects, uh, composers. Uh, we invited them to make a show in, uh, in, Cali in uh, California, in San Francisco. And we were very, uh, not wary, but doubtful about what is going to happen there. So we had to sell the tickets because it's, you had to enter in an immersive place, in an immersive uh, site uh, where there is a limited amount of people that can get in to really appreciate the work in itself. And so we had to sell the, the, the tickets online. We sold, selling is, is uh, I mean, not, not paying for... Selling, you yeah, were giving, I mean, like we're giving, giving them out uh, on, we're, on the internet. We were, no, actually this show we were selling tickets for $20. $20. No, it's the London one that we didn't really... We were selling tickets for $20 to get in because we had to pay at certain point the artist's production and not to lose everything that we invested in this place. So we sold almost 60,000 tickets within two months. So the show was such a success, we didn't expect that at all. So we're not talking about New York, we're not talking about London, we're talking about uh, Palo Alto. Um, and I mean, it's not an art hub, it's not, it, but it arose so much curiosity. People were so enthusiastic that we extended and extended, extended this show that lasts for maybe six months, that it was planned to be to, to us, uh, maybe two months, I think. And we had the same experience now with this group of uh, artists in London. We had 12,000 12, visitors within six weeks. And with a limited access, because I mean, we couldn't accept all the visitors that could have visited because there is a number so it's of It's confirming that the interest in the so field is, uh, the, is developing. The, the interest is gigantic because people want to live with their time. They want to experience, they are curious. And this is what PACE is also always, has always trying to, uh, to build its, its uh, credibility on, is to not only present a painter, a sculptor, but an idea something that is related to the times we live in. And uh, yeah, this is the... Ampus, um, galleries, collecting, you've been, uh, we met in an, in an art fair, I think probably six or seven, six years ago, I don't remember. Um, but I was told by uh, a friend in Germany that you were, you were the emperor of the, uh, of the collector because you're, you are very, very unique in the sense that you've been Focusing on that on that sector uh, with great interest uh, and very very encompassing definition, but you are well, probably the most knowledgeable collector I know in the field. So, why why did you get that threat of uh, of X Y Z arts? It was um, uh, yeah. It, it it was actually not through technology or that I was interested in. Uh, in uh, internet, because I'm I'm not, but it was that it was through as as what you also said earlier that I, I wanted to collect things that uh, corresponded to my time, and um, when I was um, introduced to this work, I uh, from a certain type of artists I, I was. Uh, Fascinated by it, but not by the. When was the, it? Um, yeah, it's uh, around 2008, 2009, something. I was uh, hanging with friends in Berlin, and there was uh, many. Uh, ask, should I hold this closer and or something? Yeah, and then um, there was uh, the art scene there that was referring mostly to to also Jody, that's how I got to know uh, Jody's work at, at that point. Yeah, <laughs> that could uh, have a balloon. The, um, but I'm not focusing in any way o o on digital art, but uh, since a lot of uh, art produced today and that I feel is contemporary 
is digital. I, I have a lot of detail, but I also have, uh, I, I have no, no, uh, I, I never thought of it as a focus for the collection, actually. It, it came uh, naturally. What you told me, which was very interesting, is that um, you are a wonderful musician and organist. Um, you're traveling a lot for your work. Um, and what you told me that what you liked with this form as well is that you could travel with your work. Uh, that you told me that in your hotel room sometimes you were putting it on the computer uh, or the um, or the iPad. Um, can you tell us more about those experiences? Yeah. I actually never did that, but I, I like to say that I can uh, that I do it. But <laughs> it's <laughs> so you lie to me. It could be a good idea. <laughs> it could be a good idea. Tell when you feel alone, you know. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. No. So the but it's um, not so much for myself, but. Uh, Dirk, you said once also that it's it's uh, when a website it's like a, a channel, and I think like a television channel. So you choose this channel which has this address, and I think that's the interesting uh, thing that you can. Um, it's available for anyone to look look at uh, art. The, this these pieces. I cannot just because I own an internet work. I cannot look at it more than anyone else. I cannot. Uh, it's the same for everyone. It's uh, they are there. The works, like the work uh, Dirk showed earlier, for instance. I don't own that, but I can watch it 24/7 if I like. You're referring to the works of Raphael Rosendahl, probably. Yeah, all the internet works. I also have works from from Dirk and Jon and, and other. Yeah, because that that's what's interesting in the kind of the. The giant leap that you need to make um, is that you you are um, acquiring a website um, with all the, the 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 problem that there is, and we will get to those the problematic of of collecting what you consider um, uh, the challenges of today uh, with this. But when you have a website, um, you know everybody is is enjoying that or, or doing it. Uh, you have a um, supposedly an update on your phone every every two months about uh, Apple doing an update of this of this app doing an update but every time there's an update it's modifying the websites uh, which means maintaining this was what Jody was saying is that it's becoming difficult because uh, in a way um, internet has been uh, changing so much uh, and and we have those companies that are trying to m lay their hands on uh, on this and making it extremely difficult for people. Jody said it earlier. It was, he referred to a time when the internet was free, um, and it's kind of a it was a zone of freedom and and, uh, and um, innovation. And today it's becoming a very commercial and uh, corporate and um, uh, ent entity. Um, um, so you have the difficulty of maintaining it. Um, but um, what are the, the biggest uh, challenges that you, you see um, in collecting XYZ art? Um, the, the main, main, shall we speak about maintenance now? Or do you want to have it later? You can. No, because I think um, internet as it is today, uh, we are really at the stone age, of, or uh, like Neanderthal age or something. We only had it for, the, it's around for 30 years or maybe 20 years for, the, for, for everyone. And uh, I think that we don't, we don't even need, know what it will look like. I mean, from the first time I went online and, and browsed or something till what it is today with uh, um, uh, just, I, I cannot imagine what it can look like 10 years from now or 40 years from now. So. I'm, I think that many of those works will also perish. And also the, this uh, um, green ASCII code that we saw earlier, it changed because it was also blinking before. Until which year? I don't know, 2003 yeah. or four. I mean, yeah. And it's yeah. a function that doesn't exist anymore in, yeah, yeah. in, the, <laughs> in the code. You can so go focusing on all kinds of details in artworks which which change, you know, I mean, can you imagine how artworks have, other artworks have changed, paintings, how they have been reframed and cut and, and represented and, and so on. I mean, I think that yeah. it's, it's with digital art, it's not, it's not much different. It's the same, yeah. Uh, that there is a difference in perception and, and as of course, with the browser, for example, the, the, the typical, uh, <coughs> uh, typical 
for a browser is that there are many brands of browsers. There are many brands of computers. There's uh, quick and slow and faster internet. So there's all kinds of different conditions. So it's not a, like a print uh, fixed on paper. And, and so the, um, the way uh, the, the, the designs or the appearance of a website looks, it's like I, when I move uh, the window from left to right and then the, 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 the graphic follows. And so that's something you needed to accept. I mean, all the different screen sizes and so on. But once you accept that, you get in return, I mean, a worldwide medium, I mean, which, which people look at in, in, in everywhere, no? literally worldwide. And for me as an artist, that is much more important than all these uh, stupid little restrictions, you know, where, where the, there's no blink, there's yes, a blink, there's a small screen, a uh, big screen. When we make, and we made those things, we, we of course were, were, were trying to, to keep all that in mind and, and, and use it, but it is of no, no, no I mean, the, the, the losses there are, are is the big gain of, of working with them mass medium i mean is 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 didn't i mean it's it's ridiculous i mean to talk about the 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 the, the, the small problems let's say uh, uh, of course i mean this has to do i mean i i, I read uh, somewhere something you were saying that you were um, you admired the artist who uh, who did who who who, who did their self publishing you know that that who were doing it on themselves like without uh, gallery support or without uh, whatever, the collector support and so on. I mean, but this is the essence of, of, of net art, of course. I mean, the rewards I mean, we got over the years from people. I mean, <laughs> no, no collector or, or, or museum can ever feel that. I mean, re because there was the, the influences, the, there was the feedback of people, uh, there's the education or, or whatever. I mean, the p other artists who built on it, you know, it's, it's so... Uh, that 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 has to do with the, the press. I mean, this is a, the printing press of today. I mean, the, the everyone said Gutenberg, Google. I mean, it's. I mean, <laughs> I mean anyway. The, the, so we took the, the the medium in our hands. We took the press in our hands. I mean, the, 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 the it's it's the age of Bruegel. I mean, it's like when 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 Plantijn and uh, started this business. We said, okay, we're we're not going to to paint for. The, the kings and the princes that you described before, and we're going to make, we're going to distribute our work through this new machine, through this that, new medium. That, that's and what uh, I, let's see later what comes with it. We can make our paintings later. I mean, just like. That's yeah. exactly what I think. We're going to come back to this. I think it's extremely important to understand that notion of ownership, which is a totally different than from the. We spoke earlier about rarity. Uh, I don't know whether any one of you went to see. Uh, the wheels exhibition, um, but in the um, in the brass museum there is a, a big um, uh, uh, panel by um, uh, Thomas Hirschhorn. He says um, uh, art, all art is all about um, inclusivity and never about exclusivity. And we'll come back to this, but I know Valentina will have to go very shortly. So, uh, do you have an idea? Because I know it's quite far away from your office in Paris, but. Uh, how you are selling it, I mean, you're selling it because that, even for your program, uh, what about what kind of, uh, of support you're giving or what kind of contract, um, you want to say a word about this? Absolutely, yes, it's, it's super easy. So it's depending on the, on, the, on the medium or on the, on the artist, but as an example for Michal Rovner, we sell, and we sell more Michal Rovner works than any other yeah, work. Yeah, but what contract? Are you selling it with it's a contract or what, what is, kind of support? There is nothing different from an, another artwork. Uh, I mean, a, a painting or a sculpture. We just have something a physical more than else. So we have the screen. We sell a screen with a, with a SD card, for example, for, for some of her works. But... It's a, it's a screen that is made on purpose for her. It's not a screen that you can go and buy in uh, Panasonic. And it also contains some of her changes. For example, she modifies, she puts a film with the Japanese paper inside. So there is a material, materiality within the medium itself. Yeah, but what happens when after 20 years the, the, the television uh, goes kaput? But yeah, I mean, but this is... We don't look at the screen as we, at, at the screen of Michal Rovner or Team Lab or 
as a screen of TV. I mean, the TV gets obsolete, but a work of art gets better and better with the years. I mean, sometimes... What, what happens when the uh, screen goes out? Uh, it happens sometimes. It happens so what sometimes. What happens then? So uh, it, there, is, there are technical issues. You have instructions first, and then you have the studio. And if in 50 years there is no studio, like today, what, what is the question? Solowit is not there to do his uh, wall drawing. But he has uh, now two generations of assistants who have been following the school of Solowit and who today draw his, his, uh, his works of art. So it will be exactly the same system. Um, We sell, um, for the moment, the, wor the, the artists we are working with have a medium like screen or a robot or so nothing, it has, there is something physical. Which is always easier to sell when it's an output. The question mm -hmm. is, are you a, f a file? A file? No, we don't, but no, but then we sell photography. It's just everything is signed, yes, but there is a, contr there is a certificate uh, of authenticity. So we'll come back to uh, what time is your train. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so if someone has a question. No. Um, <laughs> but we'll come back to now that aspect of, um, of uh, what you said, uh, Ampus, earlier, and, um, and, uh, and Dirk as well. Is that, and we, we take the example, which is a bit uh, too, too, too basic, but uh, y when you're <coughs> acquiring a, um, a website, there is the inherent uh, condition that you will maintain it to the available to the public, which is a strange, in a way, in the concept of the art market, those exclusive works of art that we have here. I think that it's very important for people to understand that it's, it's another way, it's another form. And this is not only another form by technology, but it's also another form in terms of, um, of, uh, of distribution and ownership. And I think that's very important to understand. Of course, for Felix, it's different because it's some kind of object. Yes, uh, so <coughs> what I would like to say is that, uh, in fact, uh, you have to realize that uh, a very big part of new media art is completely independent of the art market. I've never approached a gallery. A gallery has never approached me. Uh, I uh, live uh, well. I make my art. I have no limitations. I find the money. I earn money. I so um, for a very long time. I think in the new media art, there is a lot of artists who has been s watching the contemporary art mar mar uh, art market world with a very um, really wanted to being part of it, and of course I want, why not? Uh, but um, I also see uh, the complete liberty that we have uh, when we work and we create and the experimentation that we can really do. Uh, so um, this, is, this has to be understood. We don't, I mean at least I don't think so much in how my work will be uh, uh, maintained in the future because I will be dead. So, and I don't, as an artist, I don't feel like my art has to go farther than myself. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be pretentious, but it's really how I feel. And of course, if it can, then I will be very happy. My daughters will be very happy. But I will not be there. So I mean, but of course, this 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 is. I think it's quite unique in the sense that we don't uh, we are not dependent to the art market. We want to be there, but we are not. Uh, so I think this is quite unique. I think that that's important because because of that uh, history, as I described, and and, and and Jody and Felix said it, and there are other people here uh, from Labo and other collective here in Brussels. Um, the, as I said earlier, when I discovered those people were very, a little bit uh, self-sufficient in some way. Exactly. That, mean that you managed, and I was very surprised by the quality because sometimes I don't get that ca kind of quality of presentation and knowledge uh, of the artwork from galleries. So you were even giving a better uh, service than many galleries. 
So in a way, you can still live in, in that way for a very long time um, uh, and maybe develop an alternative way of distributing, uh, which is making also an interesting debate uh, from that point of view. What is important to understand is that uh, this form of art is not only different by neither the medium, the technology, but it's really a, a whole uh, other concept and uh, maybe questioning the, the basic of the, um, of the kind of luxury art market, which is based on exclusivity, which is in a kind of a, um, a virtual world does not make sense uh, so much. And in a larger social world does not make sense either because the art is for everyone. Um, so I think it's, how do you react to this? Uh, the, the yeah, no, I mean, the, 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 the genres, I mean, uh, art like Impressionists or uh, Dadaists or Surrealists, I mean, they were all uh, not mainstream artists at the beginning. I mean, they had their own distribution systems, their own groups, their own magazines, their own shows. I mean, they didn't care about <laughs> what mainstream, what other, you know, mainstream art was thinking about them. You know, so I mean, for example, I mean surrealism, or yeah, all these examples we know, uh, and and yeah, that, that uh, yeah, I mean it's a, it's a big plus. I mean, we don't. Uh, I agree. I mean about about that. Uh, uh, we are independent from uh, commercial system, and and that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, exclude that people buy art from us. I mean, so the galleries are bypassed somehow. Uh, yeah, but uh, the people buy, I mean, collectors immediately buy to, you know, yeah, you know so sometimes uh, at presentations or shows, people, they see the works also and, and yeah, can buy them. They I are all want, for I sale, want, even if we don't have a gallery. I want to and mention it has advantages. I want uh, to also. mention and congratulate you for uh, the acquisition by the State of Luck. I think it's... Uh, it's yeah, no, we, we even sold uh, work to MoMA uh, some, some, two, two, some years ago, and uh, there are works of us in, in uh, Thierry Tilkac uh, collection, which is in Brussels, uh, uh, talking about then collecting and uh, digital art. I mean, yeah, I, that at this moment, uh, at, at uh, Seine Dix-Neuf, there's a side project, I mean, the, the, of the fair, there is the, the, the collection of Thierry Tilkin. Uh, it's the, the exhibition is called Web uh, 2.0, uh, 2.0, and all the big names are there. I mean, there's Corey Archangel, there's Petra Kortreit, there is Oliver, Oliver Laric, um, all, all others. I mean, important figures from uh, from the mm. second wave of, of digital or online. Uh, reacting to the new environment of the web and it's an amazing show it's all on screen for example i mean it's not uh, this type of uh, print and it's web 2.0 so it's a, it's a balloon with a, with with a print of a, of a facebook <laughs> facebook hand on it no it's all screen based work the original youtube movies of petra kortreit Amazing. I mean, performances inside against, if you want, the a system as an entertainment system as YouTube. Uh, fantastic. Um, little and movies. And Fe Felix, and you, you have some big technology. Um, uh, the, you, some pieces are, are quite heavy and in structure. How do you, you, you find the financing to produce them? You, you have uh, collectors getting involved early, or how does it work? Where do you find the money? No, not really. I mean, we, we really look for grants and co-productions. And uh, what, what we, I mean, we earn money uh, in the production part, but we earn money also when we show our work. We have what's called an artistic fee, so we are paid to exhibit. I, I, I give my rights to exhibit my work, and I get money in return. Uh, I think this, I don't know exactly the contemporary um, art, how contemporary artists work, especially non-well-known artists, but uh, this is really different. The, I think they are not paid when they are exhibited in a lot of museums, maybe in the production part of the exhibition, but not really, uh, they don't get artistic fees. We have artistic fees, we, we are paid more or less if we are more well-known or less well-known, and uh, it's like, I see myself, I don't know, uh, as a uh, music band or as a theater company or whatever that we, we travel, which our work, we are paid, and that's all. I think that's very interesting as well because, you know, I, I didn't know that 60,000 things with the $20 tickets. I learned it today. Um, but it's, it's a, you know, it's an alternative way. Um, of course, uh, and that's what's, again, I say it's really interesting in that field is that 
this is not especially going through the art fair. There's other ways of financing it. Um, and maybe to, to a broader public uh, with a different uh, scheme. Yeah, also, I don't, I don't see the maintenance really as, 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 as such huge problem. I mean, yeah, there is a lot of technology involved, but I mean, that technology can be uh, described. Uh, you can really explain how it works, and uh, you know, you get a. If you were programmer. able to build it, if you were able to build it, someone else will be able to repair it. Of course, it's, it's not <laughs> especially because we always go grow smarter and smarter and with, with these things. I mean, and you uh, you get educated. I mean, and that's what that's important. I mean, that's place like the email. Uh, you said email. It's important to notice we both actually are are, are influenced, are supported by email. Imal is an organization here in Brussels. You were there at the Fab Lab, by the way. You, you did exhibitions there. We did exhibitions there. Brussels has a, a small yeah. infrastructure that, of that's independent I I, I wanna, uh, places, uh, like Constant, Vezetwe is another one. And you know that, that thing happened with Argos. I mentioned at the beginning, if places like that don't, cannot grow, you know, then a lot of knowledge gets lost also for the people who have bought this art, because they will maybe do need to do a reparation, an emulation, an upgrade. I, I want to mention, so mention that to the public, yeah. you're totally right. Um, uh, because again, I'm, I'm maybe thinking that you're not all specialists of, uh, of uh, XYZ art, so it's, um, there are a few institutions which are really core, email, and it's very interesting because um, Belgium and Brussels keep surprising me, because we have one of the best um, XYZ art institution in um, in Europe certainly and one of the very well known in the world one of the top ten certainly in the world, it's based on a few grants from the the region uh, uh, Flamand the Wallon or whatever it is I don't know exactly where they get the money but they do a lot with very little, uh, they are based uh, just nearby here along the the canal. I strongly recommend you to subscribe to their uh, newsletter. They're doing an amazing job. And it's, if there are some exhibition I'm never missing on some, um, some round tables of presentation to learn about the sector, it's with them. So it's email, I-M-A-L dot org. And I strongly recommend you to have a look at them. Constant, I, I know less, um, but there are others. Of course, internationally, um, you have Rhizome, um, which is a key player in the world. I couldn't even say that it's the kind of the, uh, could call it the, the MoMA of the, um, of the XYZ art. It's that, um, um, and fortunately, I'm very happy to see that major collectors or philanthropists are supporting them. They received a grant, I think, of $200,000 not so long ago, um, and they do an amazing job because as uh, Jody was explaining it, some of, um, of the uh, internet uh, browser are not working in the same way anymore. So they do an immense work of, um, of maintenance and restoration of the work. I remember I own a work personally of, by Mark Napier, um, and I was talking about some fantastic work that he created online, which was um, uh, the, trash, uh, the trash thing. Uh, it's not working anymore, and he said, you know, it would cost me thirty thousand dollars to. Um, I mean, and, and you're not talking about marginal artists. I mean, Mark Napier was two or three times part of the Whitney Biennale, eh? and many, many others. And and since many years, I mean, this is about like maybe twelve, fourteen years ago, and that's a whole other story. Why the reception of this type of art has, yeah, gone faster, is going much faster on the other side of the world than here. I mean, I. I mean, I know, but <laughs> I won't tell you. <laughs> it's actually very simple, but uh, yeah, it, but but um, yeah, they took it more serious. They 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 uh, inserted it in the education. They saw the the continuation of other media arts, of video, TV arts, and they were not afraid to 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 to, to afraid to to validate, you know, the, 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 the net, the internet arts and, and some other experiments with, with machine and robots. I mean, there has been survival research laboratories, uh, uh, San Francisco um, uh, robot group from the 70s, 80s. I mean, they did uh, the gigantic performances uh, in this, uh, worldwide 
in an underground circuit, if you want. So all these things have long, long stories. I mean, and they, they go back to, to, to yeah, what Pace Gallery was saying, technology programs in uh, Rauschenberg and, yeah. and, and in here and so on. I mean, long, so, so it's nothing, nothing special. It's not Rizal a big deal. is another institution I really strongly, if you're interested, um, they're pro publishing a lot of very high quality content as well and doing a fantastic job. So if you're interested, uh, there's a few, um, Newsletter as well. Personally, I follow Digilarti. What 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 other source of information on the sector would you maybe recommend yeah. to a public? Well, what I, yeah, well, you have <laughs> yeah. There is Net Time, huh? Net Net Time mailing list, which which that's an, a kind of an old and it's still ongoing. But these things through time, you know, at at the moment you say, well, they disappear. There's no, but but they that I mean the for example, I mean the um, Net Time mailing list. Uh, the people who started it, uh, Gert Loving in from Amsterdam, uh, Pichulz from Berlin, uh, and then all the many contributors over the years. Um, for example, uh, Gert Loving is running now the Institute of Network Cultures, which is a, a higher education school in, in Amsterdam, where, 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 they, where they do a lot of uh, online publishing uh, um, experiments and they, they do a lot of pop printing and all these things have continued to grow. Sometimes it looks at it, well, you know, where did they go? But they, they continue to grow because it grows in society. I mean, I, I can't help that digitalization has so has been eating us, you know? It ate, it destroyed, if you want, all the previous media. It destroyed photography, it destroyed film, it destroyed video. It, it dematerialized all these things. Like it ate the magnetic tapes. You know, <laughs> it, it's it's amazing. It, it's eating our, our like. Look, he's he's just looking at his iPhone now, right now. So he's eating his attention. I mean, it's what, not. It's not. I mean, what, it's what not about bad. also? I mean. <laughs> be, before get be, before get into the question. It's um, just happening. I mean, I don't know. Also, a kind of a mythic place because I'm giving some. Uh, points where people can get more information or see more of this. Uh, what about the Linz festival? Because it, people talk a lot about it. Is there yeah. a major festival, some place that you really would say is representing that thing, Felix? Well, of course, uh, the, the most uh, well. -known. You won some prizes there. Come on, don't right. be modest. You, you win some. You won some prizes at that festival. I didn't know. So. No, I've, I've been uh, honorary <laughs> mentions and yeah, but I mean there is of course Ars, Ars Electronica, which is very well known. But I mean, I really, I, I think few artists really like Ars Electronica to be uh, honest. Um, but uh, there are there are there are really a, a lot of a lot of festivals, and especially I want in Europe. I find that uh, France is really the the country which uh, the most uh, most open to to digital art. Um, I exhibit a lot in France. I have to say, uh, I almost don't exhibit in Spain because well, a lot of reasons, but. Uh, especially money, but uh, um, but France is really, I think, the most uh, powerful uh, country for new media art. Uh, of course, there is also Neural Magazine in in uh, Italy. What is it? Uh, Neural. Neural Magazine, yeah, which is very well. I mean, a very old and very well known magazine. And um, yeah, I mean, there there is really um, festivals everywhere in France. I mean, really, tomorrow I'm I'm going to Caen. In, I've never been there in the north of France. Well, there is a super ex uh, festival exhibition uh, happening next week. So uh, it goes from Marseille to Caen. Uh, there is festivals and exhibitions everywhere. Um, so, uh, as I said before, we, we I mean, uh, and of course we want to be in the hype museums and uh, with the really nice white walls. But I mean, mm, we do what we want. So. There is. So France, Ampus, you've been living in Paris for a long time. You confirmed that interest in France for that kind of things. Um, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know actually. I mean, I lived in Paris, and I. But it's true that the, there's a lot of um, institution in France that supports a lot of young arts. It's it's possible. I mean, they were er, early. It they understood that that. Uh, Film would be an art form also, and the big, uh, Centre Pompidou has a really 
I think the biggest uh, collection of video art in the world they started to buy immediately. So it was um, for the for media. Uh, I think they were quite early in just accepting new new things. Maybe it has to do with philosophy, philosophy, which is still there in, in France. Uh, Les Immateriaux, his exhibition, um, and so on. So I, I think the, I mean, the Citroën, the Nouvelle Technologie. <laughs> um, yeah, but but on the other hand, I mean, you, uh, what is special about you, Hampus, is that you uh, visited Berlin. Uh, very mean, like like uh, five, eight years, ten years ago, and you discovered uh, a whole. Uh, Digital, or they, yeah, or, um, interested young inter young artists who worked with with, uh, with 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 yeah new media and so on, and that you yeah you you became friends with them, you engaged before that they um, it always it always in a, goes in a commercial through direct system, and that's it quite, always uh, goes special. through direct contacts with uh, yeah. interaction the with direct the, uh, contact yeah, uh, and also Hampus is an artist himself, is a, a piano player, organ player, and so on. It's it's uh, for me as a person. Uh, yeah, I feel quite good, <laughs> relaxed with with Hampus. I have a natural um, match. Feel good because there's the artists in between each other, if you want. And uh, I think Hampus has, by that means, also collected uh, a very nice uh, set of works sure. to, from. Uh, maybe I know. Yeah. I consider him one of the yeah. best specialists. So we'll ask if there are some questions from the audience uh, to start. Yes. I have a microphone because she left, so we can you can pass it. Please don't steal it because I had to give my ID card uh, to get it. So, hi, can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to ask a question on agency for the artists. Do you see uh, new technologies, in particular algorithm, as a kind of new medium for self-expression, or is it? Uh, how oh, you see them as uh, co-authors of your work? Co-authors, co because we didn't hear you. Bring the, the microphone a bit closer. Yeah, are, are they like, are new technologies a new medium for self-expression, or is it rather a co-author of your work? So self-expression of co-author, whether, whether the, the, the technology is driving you in some way, if you want uh, Jody or Felix to, to answer, you want to answer Felix? Oh yeah, I, I like that the technology drives me. I mean, I'm a passenger, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say, yeah, the technology is a co-author, yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's as material uh, difficulties or contents, I don't know actually what you exactly want to say, but... The uh, same way as the brush is a co-author. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's painting. a co-author, yeah. I mean, we should not... Uh, yeah. Imposing something on as uh, complicated as uh, networks, digitalization, all kinds of, you know, contents, contents which are uh, hidden in softwares and, and so uh, if You cannot, you know, you have to... I mean, there are imprevisible... Imp Previsible things there. So, Felix, you want to add something to it? Well, I think he t he speak about algorithms and um, well, I mean, yeah, technology for me uh, is really I don't know. It's really the, the, the tools. I mean, really like mechanics. Uh, we use. I mean, in my case, it's software programming. Yeah, algorithms. Very low algorithm programming. But uh, software programming, uh, mechanics, electronics, uh, digital fabrication, that's the, the tools. That's just what we use to make art. I mean, I don't know if they are co-authors. Uh, they are not, I'm, it's, for me, it's just tools. I mean, things that I use to make art, that's all. Any other question? Go quickly, because otherwise I'm super happy to close down. <laughs> Take, take the mic, otherwise uh, the guys cannot hear you. Regarding uh, works that, websites for example, that I think there's a, one significant difference is that the website you can co constantly change. It's not a finished, even a digital file that you give you know, to a collector, it's, he has the file and the file is, uh, is finished and he would very likely not alter it, yeah? But a, a website is always there, it's on the web, and you can potentially always change it. No, because no? when you buy it, you also uh, 
host it, so I, I host all the websites. So unless uh, you have the codes to go on my web hosting, you cannot alter them. Okay, but for example, when, uh, when I don't know, Netscape or, you know, changed the, or they, when the HTML code was changed, the, also the I work am. of art was changed, yeah? That is true. Yeah. I mean, that's life. It, it changes. Consider it, yeah. <laughs> No, but I, I don't see that, much that, That's difference. a website. Uh, uh, yeah. If you look at it, um, it's, it's a website. Uh, it's part of the collection. It's by Raphael Rosendahl. But it's available for any of you, so you can uh, upload it. It's quite beautiful in, as a screensaver, but even on a large screen or a projection, anytime there's a, a sound normally appearing at one point, and you can interact with it. But yeah, um, it's... Uh, whether it's that was the beauty. I mean, that in, in comparison with print technology, that once it goes to print, it's done. And you know, developing web websites also myself in the 90s, it was, it was super uh, uh, charming that you can always, you know, the, the job is never done. You, know? you can always alter and change the code because uh, that's the nature of the, of the web. I don't know if that's the nature of the web, but it's it's one of the you know yeah typical uh, uh, one of the specificities. But I mean, uh, when you buy a painting, I can also from an artist, I can also start painting on top of it. You know, why should I do that? I bought it from an artist. I mean, I can buy a photo and I can start scratching it. So you you bought that artwork. Why would you change it? Oh, well. You can basically I mean, duplicate everything. It's just very easy to duplicate. No, no, uh, but I mean, talking media. about the materiality, I mean, the code, um, that's a decision of the artist also. Uh, so to, to stop at one point. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. To say, well, this work is finished. This is a website. Ampus, you wanted to say yeah, something. I think it's also it's just the last. We are making a big point of everything that it's like digital and so different, but it's not actually. I think it's exactly, I have this more of, the same uh, um, uh, uh, strategy for the digital works that I um, collect as for paintings or something else that I own or uh, a sculpture. I mean, they they will they come sunlight uh, on them and they change and and uh, the web browser changes. I have to get somebody to make a retouche on a painting and. I have to change some code or something. Actually, it's it's very much the same thing, and I don't think that the, that the ownership is is different in any other sense. That it's just the uh, the availability that you you own something that is a channel in a mass medium. You, as a collector, you basically associated your name once you bought it. Associated your name at, with the work, and that would never change. That uh, yeah, I can resell the work also. Then it will be uh, associated with somebody else. But the, um, I think Raphael said, who did this, this works? He said that it's like if you own a, a sculpture in a public park. So you buy a website and it's like buying this sculpture and you put it in a park. You now we put it on the internet. So the 50 bucks web hosting I pay every year, it would be equivalent of going to the to the park in the morning and, and polish my sculpture so it looks good and then everybody can enjoy it but uh, it's still it's mine i'd like to conclude with this and i think it's very important to to come to this you know it started from the uh, the internet in many ways which was supposed to be a free zone uh, of, uh, of a really great freedom uh, it was studied like this and many artists studied in that in that uh, in that uh, id uh, the internet is evolving very fast. Uh, it's in a way which I don't like, as you see, and I think Jody, when his, his balloon is uh, showing this, uh, Facebook is, for me, becoming a very dangerous uh, uh, corporation. Um, but uh, it's also opening up new ideas about what it is to, to own to own art. Uh, and that's, a, that's why it's a very interesting reflection. So. We're hoping that we had uh, raised some of your interest on that field. And um, if you have any further questions, uh, ask them to someone else. And uh, we see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>